So uh, this story takes place when I was a sophomore in high school. No big deal. It was just the most confusing, weird year of my entire life, okay? It was basically the plot of a romantic comedy. Every single turn, I was constantly getting my heart shattered by some random girl. And this time was no exception, okay? Except this time was the L of the century. I'm talking a rice gum level L. You ever had your girlfriend stolen by the weird emo kid that like sniffs glue in the corner and listens to My Chemical Romance so loud that people in the next classroom can hear it? Because um, that, that's exactly what happened to me, okay? And I'm still, to this day, upset over how big this L was. I was dating this girl for a while. I would say like two or three months at this point. And things were going okay. I liked her. I mean, I wasn't like super attached, but you know, it was a relationship and I obviously cared about her. And in my head, I thought everything was going fine, okay? I'm a nice guy. I'm handsome. You know how it is. Raccoon gang for life. And so I figured that there was nothing to be worried about. There was nothing that would really put our relationship on the rocks because we didn't really have any issues. But uh, as the relationship progressed a little bit, she started to get really close with this weird emo kid. And I mean like the type of kid that raw XDs in the Discord chat, okay? And, and I've, I've always loved emo-ish music. Like punk rock is definitely my favorite type of music. I'm not talking just about a kid that's into that music, okay? I'm talking this is the type of kid that sits in the corner and always is like, uh, my life is like a draining swamp. There's no Shrek in it. I, I don't I don't know what that was, but basically this man is the type of dude to cry over Shrek 3, okay? And that's the worst Shrek. And she starts getting really close with him, but I'm like, ah, no threat there, okay? This dude clearly is a potato. There's, there's no reason why I should be worried about this in my relationship. But then things start, start to get weird. She starts going to him with problems about our relationship. And fellas, if you're ever in a relationship and she starts to have a guy best friend she complains to about you, that's a sign that you better run, okay? And I mean run faster than Usain Bolt in the Olympics, okay? So anyways, they keep getting closer. She's telling him about all of our problems, and I'm starting to get uncomfortable. I'm starting to think there might be more to this story, okay? So one day we get in a fight, and I basically tell her, like, I don't like emo kid. I think he's weird. I think he's into you, and, and I don't like the fact that you're constantly telling him about our problems, which I think is pretty fair. And she promises me, oh no, emo kid's just a friend. Ha ha ha. And like I said, this this dude was weird. He probably ate glue. Actually, no, I did see him eat glue. We were in art class together. He was that weird, okay? He was a glue-eating emo kid that RAR XDs. I didn't think it was gonna be bad. But anyways, after I have this conversation with my girlfriend about how I don't like emo kid, the next day, he walks up to me at lunch and is like, don't you dare try to ruin my friendship. She's the only friend I have left, da 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 da. I can't believe you would say that. And I'm like, listen, bro, I don't, I don't have anything personal against you. I don't like you, but like, no beef. I don't want to fight you or anything, but I just don't like how close you are with my girlfriend. Like, that's fine. You guys want to be friends? That's cool. But you constantly hearing about our relationship issues, I'm just not cool with because I don't know you, right? And he starts like growling at me. I mean, growling. The emo kid is growling at me at lunch. You know how weird it is to have this emo kid growling at you because you said you don't like that your girlfriend talks to him about her problems? So here I am getting growled at by a Hot Topic poster, bro. I don't know what's going on. And he's like, I'm gonna make sure that you guys break up. I won't let her date you. Rah, 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 rah. And I'm like, bro, you are so angry. Please stop growling, first of all. Second of all, brush your teeth. Your voice smells. Your voice smells. Your breath smells. That's what I meant to say. It was all just, it was all just, ugh. It was a mess, okay? So this kid's clearly angry. I got an angry emo kid on me now, bro. And I'm kind of nervous because this is the type of weird emo kid that's gonna like try to sacrifice my soul to Satan without my permission, okay? And at this point, I'm about to break up with my girlfriend because if she's gonna be with weird emo kid who's gonna threaten and growl at me over lunch, then I, I, I just, I just don't want to deal with it. So anyways, things calm down for a little bit. And that weekend, I get a Snapchat from one of my friends and he goes, yo, your girlfriend's here holding hands with emo kid and sends me a Snapchat. And they're like walking around the mall, holding hands, being flirty and stuff. And at this point, I'm like, oh my God, weird growling emo kid just stole my girlfriend. This is no meme. This is DEFCON 1 situation. I just got swagger jacked by a kid who drinks highlighter ink. What is going on? So I call her and I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, nothing. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I know. I know what's up. The gig is up. I know you're cheating on me with emo kid. And she's like, oh, he just understands me and da da da. I think we're better, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you could have just broken up with me. You know, like if you want to date emo kid, that's, that's totally cool, bro. Like whatever. I, I don't care. You do you. I'm not pressed about the breakup, but like you didn't have to go around holding hands with him at the mall. Okay. And then he takes the phone and is like, bro, don't talk to her. You know that da 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 da. And I'm like, all right, all right. Listen, angry emo kid. First of all, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry that you like think that I have some massive issues with you. I don't. I knew there was some suspicious stuff going on. That's why I didn't like you. And you just confirmed all my suspicions. So I was right to not like you all along. And at this point, he's probably growling at me some more. Rah, rah, some weird emo XD stuff. 
And I'm like, whatever, whatever. I don't really care about the relationship much at this point. If you want to cheat on me with emo kid, you're more than welcome to. Like, I'm done. I'm over this. I broke up with her. And uh, they ended up dating for like two months before they broke up. And emo kid wrote a bunch of emo songs about it. And um, yeah, moral of the story is uh, if your girlfriend's ever besties with an emo kid, then she's probably cheating on you. And uh, you're going to get swagger jacked by an angry emo kid. Today I'm going to be telling you guys the story of a time an angry emo kid tried to fight me. This is a sequel to a video I made about a month ago now. Holy cow, this channel is starting to get old. Regardless, guys, I think you guys are uh, really awesome. And you guys should press the like button if you're hyped for the story. And without further ado, let's get into a kid growling at me trying to throw fisticuffs in the middle of the lunchroom. Let's get it. So basically, I'm going to give you a little summary of the first story. Uh, I, <laughs> an emo kid stole my girlfriend, all right? I'm not too proud of it, you know? I definitely got swagger jacked by an emo kid that had painted nails and growled it me but uh it, it's whatever it's fine he can have her all right i didn't even like her that much <laughs> Nah, it wasn't like my heart was shattered or anything. But regardless, the emo kid stole my girlfriend and then proceeded to try to fight me when I was a little upset about it, which is just kind of surprising, bro. Like, if you steal my girlfriend and expect me to just be cool with you all the time, you've got another thing coming. That's not what you can expect at all. Regardless, me and him definitely did not like each other from that point forward. Obviously, I don't think anyone expected me to like him. Basically, anytime me and him could interact and fight, we would. But not like fight as in physically fight, but just the low-key kind of fighting where you're both trying to sabotage each other and just, you just don't like each other and usually i would win because you know i'm not the weird kid that growls at people at lunch whenever they try to talk to him because that's what this kid would do anyways it all boiled over one day when we were uh in art class you know because i took art mainly because i wanted an easy a i didn't get an a because i suck at art and can't do many things that are creative you know i was really out here she's like draw draw a photorealistic dog and i was like ah my dog has eight legs because it, i don't know i can't draw regardless i had me and my crappy eight-legged dog and we were hanging out at this table just living life living lavish doing what we gotta do to survive when this guy walks up to me and says, your dog sucks almost as much as you do. And I'm like, yo, 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 you can talk shit about me. You can take my girlfriend. But don't you dare talk shit about my eight-legged dog, all right? I put a lot of effort and heart into this drawing. And the fact that you're going to sit there and hate it is really disrespectful and rude. So I respond in the only way I know how. I just get a little sassy with him and I say, you know, man, it's fine because the only thing that sucks more is your mom. Which, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, isn't even that bad of a roast, all right? I'm sure your mom sucks off a lot of people, bro. That's why your life's so bad, you know? But re regardless, he gets a little upset at this and is like, what did you just say about my mom? And I said, well, it only sucks less than your mom. Your mom sucks more. It's not rocket science, man. I'm basically saying that your mom really, really, really loves meat in her throat. That's all I'm saying. And of course, he gets mad, gets all up in my face trying to act all macho. Oh, you won't say it again. You won't say it again. And I'm like, yeah, well, your mom sucks more than my dog. My dog doesn't even suck, by the way. Like, that isn't even an insult. My dog was beautiful. It has eight legs and it's proud. I don't know why everybody out here has ridiculous beauty standards for these animals, but they're just beautiful, okay? So now he's all up in my face trying to flex on me and, you know, his breath stinks, so I'm like, hey, dude, back up. Like, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. I just said your mom sucks. And he goes, yeah, yeah, well, my mom, my mom's in the hospital. And I'm like, all right, well, sorry. I, I, I wouldn't have said it if I knew, but you expect me to know all your problems, bro? Like, I got a third eye opened up. Just, ah, I know all your problems all the time. So I say, yeah, I'm sorry, dude. I didn't know. I, I literally did not know. I wouldn't have said it if I knew your mom was in the hospital. I'm sorry. And he's like, no, no, you've gone too far. I already hated you, bro. That's it. Square up and tries to like lift me out of my chair. The only problem is this guy just isn't very big. I'm, I'm a really tall guy. I wouldn't say I'm ripped, but I'm 6'3", so I've got some height with me. So here he is trying to like lift me out of my chair and it's just not working because he weighs the same amount I do, but he's a, a third of the height. So it's just not, not really working for him. All right. Nothing about this situation is advantageous. There's no way he's coming out of here with a dub ski. So I just go, what are you doing? And the teacher walks over. She goes, is there a problem here? He goes, no, nah, there won't be once he gets up and I fight him. And I'm like, dude, I'm not going to fight you. I did not know the what, uh, like, I, how do you want me to apologize? I didn't know your mom had a situation. How was I supposed to know? You want me to just read your mind? Oh, dude, this guy's mom's in the hospital. Like, how was I supposed to know that? And the teacher asked what happened. So I give her the rundown, how he made fun of my dog and how that's really not okay because my dog is a beautiful soul that, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. He's a beautiful man. He's really solving global warming out here. And so the teacher sends us both to the dean's office. We're sitting there. We, I ended up getting detention. He ended up getting suspended for trying to fight me. It, it was a pretty interesting story. He got moved out of my art class because I made up a story about feeling threatened because I just hated seeing his face every day. So take the L, man. Ha ha. Get pranked. <laughs> All right, so this is actually one of my last, like, normal interactions with society before quarantine started. So it's back in January, which I said it's recent. I, I guess it's not now, but, like, 
quarantine time just moves differently dude i'm telling you 2020 time doesn't feel real like yeah it's the middle of july but do any of us actually believe that these last you know couple months have even been real i don't think so so i'm sorry for saying it's recent it was my last interaction with like society though that is really memorable and uh it was the last time i also went to a gamestop and i'll probably never go to a gamestop again mainly because i don't know if they're gonna exist after this like apparently they filed for bankruptcy or whatever so rest in peace gamestop you know uh, i guess no more stories about crazy people at gamestop but anyways I had gone to GameStop because I had needed a power cord for uh, an old Xbox. I found an Xbox 360 under my bed and was like, yo, I'm going to set this up and play some old Call of Duties, uh, but I needed to get a power cord for it. So I had gone to GameStop to see if they had one. And while I was there, I walked in and the person behind the counter happened to have been somebody that I used to play video games with in high school. And we were just talking and catching up and like, we were never close, but we were just talking about what's going on. And it was me, him, and uh, these two kids in the corner of the store that had... The traditional emo haircut, you know, the the bowl cut swoop with, like, the studded belt. The, the traditional emo look. And uh, I used to be an emo kid, so, like, I didn't really judge anything by it. They were just kind of standing in the corner. And uh, I'm just talking to the dude, and I'm like, yeah, you know, just saying how life's been going. He's like, how have things been going? And at the time, coronavirus hadn't, like, smited everything out of existence. And I was like, oh, things are going great, you know. I told him about my YouTube channel and um everything like that i'm like life's going great and one of the emo kids when i said life's going great like scoffed like <sighs> like you know like that but loudly enough so that i would hear him and uh, i kind of turned and looked at him and i was like uh excuse me you know because like listen i didn't say anything to you guys but look if i'm catching up with somebody regardless of whether or not you like what people are saying when like they're catching up with somebody th there's no reason to scoff like that that's just unnecessary so i'm like are, is everything all right dude and he's like, I just think it's a little bit ridiculous to say that life is great. Like, do you understand what it's like to live in this crappy country? And I'm like, uh, all right, dude, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean to frustrate you. My bad. I, I, I'm sorry. My life's been just particularly good at us. It's not like a statement, you know? I wasn't trying to be like, ah, this country is the best. Like, I was literally saying my life's been going good. And he's like, yeah, well, you do realize life is meaningless, right? Like, you're just some pawn in somebody's scheme and, like, you're going to work for the rest of your life and die. And like, dude, listen, I, I don't know what this is about emo kids sometimes, but like, if you want to hate your life, that's totally your choice. It's a dumb choice. I think hating life is kind of ridiculous. You only got one. You should live it up while you got it, you know? But like, if you're going to hate life, that's your choice. But there's no need to bum everybody else out and bring the energy down for everybody else. You know, everybody else is just trying to eat some crumpets, some croissants for breakfast. And you're like, croissants are meaningless even if you eat them you'll only poop them out so if you think about it everything in life is pointless it's like oh okay dude some things are pointless but some things are fun playing video games kind of pointless some stuff's just fun so whatever i'm kind of like oh you must be a bunch of fun at parties which you know i've used that response before it's usually my response to somebody who's just killing the vibe you know like Oh, you know, and the point isn't to make them feel bad, but it's just to make them aware of, like, the fact that they are killing the fun. And the response to this is the other emo kids, like, huh, yeah, parties, we don't go to those. Like, yeah, that's ridiculous, too. Fake social circles. Like, these kids are going off with the most I'm 14 and this is deep stuff you've ever seen. Like, it really was like these kids went to a meme page about the cringiest stuff you could say when you think that you're deep and figured out life. But in reality, you're just like a little kid who doesn't know anything about anything, you know? Oh, everything's meaningless. Everything's stupid. Fake social circles. Yeah, uh, okay, dude. I'm sure. Yes, you don't hate parties because you never get invited to them. It's definitely because you're too cool. I'm sure you get invited to tons and you just say no, right? Like, come on. Come on. And now both the emo kids are being a little bit ridiculous. And so I kind of look at the guy who is supposed to be getting me this power cord. I'm like, whatever. Uh, they didn't have it, and I'm like, I I'll leave. Do you know who could? And he's like, nah, you might have to just order it on Amazon. And I'm like, yeah, I was just kind of hoping to get it today because I impulsively found the Xbox, you know? Like, I could have ordered it on Amazon, but when I found it, I was like, yo, I want to play the old Call of Duty. So I decided to try to just get it right then. So I, I go to leave the store and just go back to my car and go home, which is what normal people do when they don't buy something from a store. And as I'm leaving, the two emo kids, like, walk out with me, and they're like, yo, dude, do you have a problem? And I'm like, dude, listen, you scoffed at what I had to say. I, I understand that you hate your life, and obviously it's very hard. No, I don't have a problem. And they're like, because we can settle this problem right now and crack their knuckles. 
and I look at both of them and I size them up and like I'm bigger than them and I just ask them I'm like how old are you guys and uh, the small one says like oh I'm 14 and that one says like 16 I'm like no I'm not gonna fight you guys I'm like why are you scared and uh, to be honest no I'm, it's not that I'm afraid it's just like I'm not trying to go to jail you know there's this thing called you can't hit kids like that's the law and some kids deserve it don't get me wrong not a lot of them not a lot of them some of them Absolutely. I think that's an indisputable fact. Like, absolutely. So I tell them, no, I'm not going to fight you because I'm not trying to go to jail. And they're like, oh, what? Are you like afraid? Yeah, I'm afraid of jail. Yes, yes. I'm a logical human being. Yes. And they're like, yeah, you're just a cog in the machine. Like, you're a cog in the machine. Work until you die, just like everybody else. You little, you cog, you, you cog in the machine. Which I think they thought was gonna get like a really big reaction out of me, you know, like make me be, oh, don't call me that, bad. I'm not in the machine, but like, yeah, man, your society's pretty cool. I kind of like it, you know. That machine produces uh, Marvel movies, and and that machine produces like Lucky Charms and stuff. So some of the machine is cool. So sometimes I like to be a part of it. Yeah, you know, if you don't like the machine, that's cool, man. That's really cool. But uh, considering you're wearing jeans that you bought at the mall, that's just kind of a weird thing. Like you're gonna call me a cog, like you weren't just shopping in a GameStop. What are you? And, and that amount of logic, I think, just like broke their brain because the emo kid just like gets up or tries to get in my face. I should say, like, he, he keep in mind, you know, this is the 14 year old that's trying to get in my face. And so he's like standing up on me on his tippy toes, still not in my face because I'm not trying to lie, I'm kind of tall. And he's like, we can settle this right now. Like, quit with the words, man. Do you want to settle this or not? I'm like, I'm not going to fight you. And I'm like smiling and laughing because like it's just so funny. This kid is on his tippy toes in my face. And like, listen, for anybody out there who's going to comment like, oh, you should have fought him, man. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to jail over a kid in GameStop who wants to fight me, especially not a kid that thinks calling me a cog in the machine is going to, like, break me and cry. Anybody that got over there watching the Matrix phrase or Matrix phase is, is okay. Like, nah, my honor can be harmed by a kid yelling at me because uh, the, the danger that comes with fighting him is definitely worse. So I guess on a technicality, I did get punked by these emo kids, dude, but, like, as they're up in my face and uh, I'm, I'm laughing, they're like, yeah, you're scared. And I'm like, dude, I'm literally laughing. He's like, yeah, then why won't you hit me? I'm like, why don't you hit me? You know, you know why I can't hit you. You're a kid. Hit me. Like, that way it's self-defense. And they're like, no, I'm not going to hit you. That That's weak. Like, throwing the first punch is for, for weaklings. I'm like, oh, okay, listen. So you just told me that I'm a punk for not hitting you, but I told you to hit me and you just said no. So, like, what what's the deal? Am I strong for not hitting you first? And I can see his brain, like, kind of trying to understand what I just said and how he's, like, making himself look stupid. And he's like, whatever, I'm over this. And he, like, goes to his friend and they're like, let's get out of here. And they walk over to this bike rack. And there's, like, two BMX bikes, right? And they hop on him trying to look all cool. But the only problem is, and this isn't an insult to BMX riders because I, I really respect the craft, but... There's really no way to angrily ride a bicycle, you know? Like, there, there's really just no way to look cool while angrily riding a bike. It's just impossible. Try to imagine it. You can't do it. The way you have to, like, sway back and forth with a mad face, like, it's just a funny visual. So they're trying to, like, ride the bike away all mad. And uh, the emo kid who tried to, like, get up in my face, that's mind I broke, I think, is, you know, looking back at me, seeing if I'm still looking. And he sees that I'm still looking. So he tries to show off and do a trick. And there was, like, this little curb. So he tries to, like, bunny hop off the curb on his bike. And I don't know how he manages to do it, but, like, when he lands, his foot slides off the pedal and stomps onto the ground and then like he stops but the bike keeps going and he eats it man like literally eats it karma basically got him pretty damn quick dude couldn't even get out of the parking lot while angrily riding his bicycle without messing up so i laughed as loudly as i could i, I don't know if he heard it i hope he could but hey man if for whatever reason you know you're watching this uh, i hope it hurt i hope you got road rash on your knee and i don't feel bad for wishing that on you so uh yeah Technically, I got punked by a bunch of emo kids in the parking lot of a GameStop because I wasn't trying to go to jail, but that's life sometimes, you know? You gotta do what you gotta do. I did end up ordering that corn on Amazon, and I've been playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on the 360, though, and it's been pretty fun. So, uh, yeah. <laughs>
All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, for those of you who don't know, I have made a bunch of videos on emo kids here on the channel just because there were a bunch of them at my high school. But, like, I don't hate emo kids. I used to be a little emo kid in middle school. Like, I don't have anything against them. There just happened to have been an abundant amount of cringy ones at my high school. And, like, I, I can't do anything about that, okay? It's not my fault that cringy people were at my school. But regardless, I guess this guy didn't get the memo because he sent me a message on Instagram basically accusing me of having some secret vendetta against emo people. Dude, why do you constantly bully the emo community? You're so annoying, man. We go through so much and you constantly make fun of us and it makes us feel worse. Why are you such a bully? Now, uh, listen, if you've ever watched any of the videos I've ever made on emo kids, like, I, I legitimately don't have a vendetta against the whole community. Like, I don't bully the whole community. I talk about very specific experiences that, like, I personally have had. Also... I don't know about you, but, like, the term bully is just so cringe to me, dude. Like, me pointing out flaws about a, a certain group of people, specifically people I've had an experience with, isn't bullying. Like, wh what are you talking about, dude? And even then, if you're an emo kid and, like, you feel like my bullies pick on you, I'm gonna teach you a little lesson, all right? Uh, don't watch them. It's not that hard. So, naturally, I just thought this message was stupid, so I replied with the only thing I thought was uh, a logical reply. I hit him with, wanna sniff my fart, which uh, apparently he didn't like because he said, wow, real mature, you're so not funny. So I just reply, bro, I don't hate emo kids, what are you talking about? I legitimately don't hate emo kids. I'm not gonna put a picture on screen, but in 8th grade, I had the bowl cut, I, I was an emo kid. Like, I legitimately don't hate them, so I don't know what this kid is talking about. And it sounded so stupid that I just thought wanna sniff my fart would be funny. Like, I'm gonna be honest, I really thought this kid was possibly trolling. Like, I didn't think anyone was actually gonna take my story times as, like, bullying the entire emo community, but here we are. But I, I genuinely don't hate emo kids. Like, I know I'm saying that a lot, but that's just because, I don't know, I don't really hate anybody that much. Much. Like, yeah, there's some people that annoy me, but I, I genuinely don't hate anyone, especially a group of people that, like, I used to be a part of. I am a former emo kid. It would be really stupid if I all of a sudden just despise them for absolutely no reason. But this is when the emo kid really starts to get mad and just starts, like, threatening me, which I, I don't know. I just thought this was funny. So he hits me with the, we are going to take down your channel if you key bullying emo kids. And I say, please don't, man. Without this channel, I'll have to be as lame as you. Which I know is an insult, dude, but when somebody starts threatening to take down your channel for stuff you don't do, like, obviously I'm just gonna start messing with this guy. I'm sorry, but this channel particularly does not bully anyone. Like, I really just tell stories. So sure, man, you're gonna get me taken down if I tell another story about emo kids. Well, here you are. I'm making another video about your DMs. I'm not leaking your name. I'm not saying anything specific about you. I'm just saying YouTube isn't gonna take me down because I make a video about people who are anonymous and then tell a story that I've experienced. Yes, YouTube. Yes, he's made several videos about emo kids where he doesn't say their real name or provide any personally identifying information, but uh, us emo kids are being very bullied. Not to mention, dude, if I keep bullying emo kids, if I, wh what do you mean if I keep bullying emo kids? I'm gonna be honest, I've made maybe like three emo kids videos this year. I can actually check, hold on. My bad, my bad. I've made four videos on emo kids this year. Keep in mind, I upload like every single day. And I mean, I'm not trying to be a scientist here, but there's been well over 100 days so far this year. So under like 3% of all of my content is about emo kids. What are, what are you talking about? It's not like every single day I just get on here and rail on emo kids. And not to mention, bro, if we look at the titles of these story times, emo kids tried to jump me. It's a story about emo kids who tried to jump me. Emo kid tried to fight me. Same thing. Emo kid wants to fight me. Same thing. Emo kids tried to rob me. I'm pretty sure that was a subscriber story. So, like, there's stories about kids that happen to me emo. It's not targeting the community. It's just the truth. Like, listen, if I walked up to your mom and punched her in the face, you would be like, YouTuber punches my mom because I'm a YouTuber. LMAO, keep going with your playground insults, Scrubby. You are nothing without YouTube. I bet you'd be a TV repairman working a boring 9 to 5, you small little stupid loser. You don't deserve anything you have, and you're so talentless. And I can't wait for the day when we take down your channel, and you have to be poor and stupid.
Yes, that's right. I am now poor and stupid without YouTube. I'm gonna be honest. I really can't argue with this. Obviously, without my YouTube channel, I, I wouldn't be anyone because I the YouTube channel is the reason anyone knows who I am. So yeah, fair enough, I guess. I, I, I wouldn't be Scrubby without the YouTube channel name Scrubby. You really got me there. And uh, honestly, I just didn't agree with the way he talked about like boring nine to five being a stupid TV repairman because everybody, all my friends, all my family, like a lot of people work nine to fives. I don't think having a normal job just makes you stupid and talentless. So I decided to just mess with them. Then I sent him back a message asking him, you know, what about TV repairman is stupid? Like, why are you calling these people stupid? Just because this has always bugged me. Like, I get DMs all the time telling me if it wasn't for YouTube, I would, like, be working at McDonald's. And, like, who cares, bro? Why do you care where people work so much? If somebody has a job that they like, it doesn't matter how long they work or where they work. Like, if they're happy, who cares? And if YouTube dries up and I decide to be a TV repairman, it shouldn't bug you, dude, if that's what I want to do. Just because somebody has a normal job doesn't mean they're stupid. So he hits me with the, you know what I meant, after I ask him why TV repairmen are stupid. And so I just say, I don't know. They work hard to fix TV. That's rude. And he says, shut up and stop acting stupid. F you. And at this point, I'm like, ah, all right. I I'm just going to mess with this dude. I don't really care. I'm not worried about the channel getting taken down because of this kid. So I just hit him back with the, uh, oh, you want to F me? <laughs> That's kind of weird. And uh, that, that one really got under his skin, dude. I don't know what it is about trolls, but it's just so obvious when they're going to like, you know, lose their mind over something stupid that you just said. So, uh, he obviously gets a little upset, so mad to the point where he just decides to block me. He says, uh, I blocked. I hope you lose your Chanel, which, I mean, I don't know. I don't have any Chanel, if you want me to be honest, so best of luck with making me lose that. He autocorrects it to channel, though. I don't know. I personally think he might have meant Chanel. Probably some of my designer handbags, Jeffree Star style, are gonna go missing. Uh, I'm purposely gonna put Emo Kid in the title of this just to make sure that he gets mad, and, uh, if you're watching this dude... Maybe he's trying to threaten to snitch on people like their mommy isn't the best way to get them to like take down videos you don't like. And uh, yeah, it's probably going to be monetized. So thanks for the content. So basically the sitch is this. At my school, there's a couple emo kids that usually get up to no good. It's not like a giant population, but it's enough emo kids where like you can pretty much tell that they're an established clique, right? Like you can tell, oh, those are the emo kids. They sit next to the kids that eat bologna sandwiches. The kids who eat bologna sandwiches are also sometimes emo, but not always emo. The way schools work. And for some reason, the emo kids like to pretend that everybody is like coming after them all the time, all right? Like nobody really bugs the emo kids. Nobody really has a problem with them but for some reason you know whenever there's a new rule like I don't know don't light cats on fire the emo kids are like it's my right to light my cat on fire I can't believe they would persecute us emo kids like this wow our town really hates emo kids and the reality of the situation is the rules aren't being made because of emo kids they're being made because they just won't want crazy people roaming around town all right like I personally don't want anybody lighting cats on fire walking down my back alley at the school not that that's an actual rule you, you guys get what I'm saying Okay, they like to pretend that they're victims all the time. Which, I mean, is fair. I feel like emo kids just are generally like to pretend that they're the victim. Like, it's one of the things that they do. And regardless, you know, I had a couple classes with a couple of the emo groups. And most of the dudes in this emo clique were dudes, you know? Like, they were uh, definitely men. And, and you know, that's just how it be sometimes. I don't really <laughs> know what that means, but that's just how it be sometimes. Regardless, there was a couple emo girls, though. And they were known for being especially crazy. I'm not really sure if it was, like, the water the emo kids drank or the fact that they listened to music music too loud or what but for some reason the emo girls were known to be notoriously easy to trigger and as uh, I'm sure most of you guys know I'm a bit of a troll I like to get under people's skins I like to make people angry not because you know I enjoy ruining people's day but just because there's something fun about taking somebody who takes things too seriously making them take something too seriously and then them looking silly for taking it too seriously you know like I don't know if you've ever been in one of those situations but have you ever just made somebody mad for the sole purpose of making them mad and by the time they realize that you're just doing it to make them mad they're even madder i said mad a lot but i hope you guys are picking up what i'm putting down and regardless i had a class with one of those emo girls who was notorious for being super easy to trigger like she was the queen of making herself the victim of everything all right like if our teacher assigned an essay about flowers she'd be like wow you really assigned an essay about flowers just to
to spite me and make my life miserable. And it's like, no, she assigned an essay about flowers because we're reading a book about a garden, dude. So regardless, one day I'm just sitting in this class and our teacher starts talking about how she's going to make us write poetry and how she wants us to avoid dark themes because I'm sure it's not fun as a teacher to sit there and read 80 poems about how my life is a dark lilac rose at which I cannot contain. And she's like, it's not just stuff about that. I don't want anything heavy about, you know, depression or anything like that. Because, hey, it's a school assignment. We're going to have to share them with the class. So I prefer if we just avoided all super serious topics, which is fair, you know. Nobody wants to be sitting in English class hearing somebody go on and on about how, like, their dad used to lock them in a closet without Christmas presents, you know. Like, that's just not something people want. And the emo girl immediately starts piping up about how the teacher is exclusively doing this because of, you know, well, because I'm emo, you don't want me to write poetry about things that I truly feel. So, you know, I do what uh, every troll would do in this situation, and I say under my breath, not loud enough for, like, anybody to hear exactly what I said, but enough where everybody knows that I said something. I say, quit being so dramatic. And emo girl, I guess, hears enough to turn around and goes, excuse me, what did you just say? And so I pipe up louder and go, <clears throat> Excuse me, please quit the dramatics, okay? She's not single-handedly saying, I made this rule to make all the emo kids upset. That just doesn't make sense. Why would she do that? Like, none of that makes any sense. Think about this critically. The teacher made a rule explicitly to piss off the girl with skittle-colored hair. I don't think so, okay? Like, that's just not what happens in schools. No teacher's like, oh, I, I would have loved to read most poetry, but you did have rainbow hair, so I had to punch you in the face, Gerald, and make a rule explicitly to make you upset. And the emo girl gets upset at me and starts, like, getting out of her chair and is like, you know what, you're lucky that I don't put a curse on you right now. Like, you know me and my group have the ability to do magic. And so I look her in the eyes and uh, she starts talking about how she knows magic, right? Because all the emo kids in our school were also convinced that they were all witches and wizards. Like, no cap, they were all convinced that they were chosen ones from long ago to be the people that would carry magic in the world today. And so I look at her and go, all right, listen, uh, you're not smart enough to get into Hogwarts, even if you were a witch, but we all know that stuff's not real. So how about you go sit down, quit the dramatics, and let our teacher explain the assignment. And that infuriates her to a level that I never prepared for, all right? Like, uh, now she's really mad, because not only did I just embarrass her, I also said that her magic isn't real, which apparently is the worst possible thing to say to somebody that thinks their magic is real. So, uh, what happens next is basically what happens whenever you make a witch angry, okay? She starts talking about how not believing in magic is the best way to guarantee that my magic curses will affect you. And I'm like, wow. So if I don't wake up tomorrow with Toad, I'm calling you. And uh, I, I called her a, a, a not nice word, okay? Listen, I understand I instigated this, but I'm not the one who started throwing things around. I said stop being dramatic and pretending that every rule made at our school is single-handedly made just to make you upset. Which I still think is pretty true, okay? Stop pretending that every time a rule gets made, it's just to make emo kids upset. Because rules affect everybody, okay? I'm sure there's more than just you in this class that would write about some emo stuff in their poetry to express themselves. That's the only thing that's been changed. Stop pretending that it was made just to make you upset. And she instantly went, I'm gonna put a magic curse on you to make sure that your firstborn child is as ugly as a newt, alright? Like, I, I think one of these is not like the other, and I'm just saying, I never promised to make anybody's firstborn child ugly. So I think I'm in the clear. I think I've got the moral high ground on this one. You don't have to agree with me. I'm just saying, the second you start making fun and, uh, like, threatening kids that aren't even born yet, you're in the wrong. You're not taking the dub on that morally. I'm sorry. It's just not how that works. No matter what you say, the second you start going, oh, your kid's gonna be ugly, I'm gonna curse it, you lose. And what happened? Okay. <laughs> she gets up in my face, right? Rainbow hair and all, glitter falling off of her shoulders. I'm pretty sure at one point she tripped over one of the Tamagotchis she had on and gets up in my face and is like, you dare question the validity of my magic again and see the wrath that shall forsake in you. Which, uh, first of all, your breath stinks, okay? Get a breath mint, maybe. Maybe that's the reason your spells aren't working, because all the demons you're trying to conjure come out of the pit and go, God damn, your breath smell like booty cheeks, and then go back in, all right? Like, maybe if you brush your teeth a little bit more, your demons would work a little bit better. Second of all, I don't believe that your magic is real. And she's like, that's it. We're fighting. And, like, goes back to try to hit me. And I, I can't fight her, okay? 
I can't hit a girl. Like, what do you expect me to do, bro? I was just trolling out here. You're the one who was like, you dare question my magic? I'm not trying to fist the cuffs. So she goes to swing on me. And so I take a step back to try to be like, whoa, I don't want to fight you. Like, I can't hit a girl. No matter how goth emo witchy she is trying to swing on me, like, I, I, I can't RKO Barbara through a desk, okay? This emo phase is going to end eventually. What if she gets really hot after? That's a joke. That's a joke, guys. Come on. Everybody knows that witches are always going to have warts. That's also a joke. I, I, I feel like this is not going to go well. Anyways, I take a step back to, like, avoid the swing, right? Like, I'm trying to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, okay. Listen, Deborah. Listen, listen. Things are getting a little bit out of control. Let's just all reconvene. Breathe a little bit. You don't want to fight me. You don't. Like, you, you really don't want to fight me. And she's like, no. You've forsaken the covenant that I took to become a witch. Now, it's up to you to face your ultimate, like, disintegration. Which is a weird way to say I'm going to fight you. Like, I don't feel like anyone's been disintegrated after getting punched in the face. No one has ever been hit in the face so hard that their body literally shrivels into dust on the spot. Like, that just doesn't happen, okay? Maybe if you're a James Bond villain with a gadget, but that's not something going on every day. So at this point, the entire class has stopped, and everybody is watching me try to, like, 1v1 this emo girl. And so the teacher walks up and is basically like, okay, guys, break it up, break it up. Uh, the, the rule is not put into place for any group of people. It's just made because I don't want to read all these heavy things. I don't want to have an awkward moment where, you know, someone's sharing something personal and somebody makes fun of it. Like, that's where I'm coming from. And she's like, well, you, you could have just said that. You didn't have to make it seem like you were singling out emo kids. And so... Uh, at this point, I should have kept my mouth shut, but I go, she wasn't singling out emo kids. You just want to be a victim so badly because life is easy here. And she's like, you shut your mouth. And so the teacher, realizing that, you know, I am instigating all of this, says, okay, you need to get out. You need you need to go. So I go out in the hallway, and I'm waiting. And about five minutes later, the teacher comes out, walks over, and says, hey, I really appreciate you defending me. I appreciate what you were trying to do by saying, hey, it's not her fault. She just doesn't want to read heavy things. However, you know, you know that group of kids is pretty easy to frustrate so you might not want to do it anymore like you might not want to have an army of emo kids constantly mad at you and here's the thing I don't really care bro like I'm all right if the entire emo population of my school hates me I will sleep just fine at night I don't mind and so I'm kind of like yeah you're right I'm sorry for disrupting your class she's like no uh, I told her that I would I would talk to you, so, like, if she asked, could you just say that you're in trouble? And I was like, yeah, of course, no problem, because I get where the teacher's coming from, all right? She doesn't want any beef. I'm obviously not going to be a problem because I'm defending her. However, if the emo girl thinks that I got off lightly and, like, didn't get in trouble, that could cause a problem. I can, I can foresee a world where that makes sense. So I'm like, yeah, for sure. I'll just pretend that, you know, I got in trouble. No big deal. And she's like, great, thank you. <laughs> Anyways, guys, as you can tell from the title and thumbnail, today we have a story about an emo kid. Like, about a year ago now, six, seven months ago, I told a bunch of stories about a bunch of emo kids at my school, because I just had beef with them pretty often, alright? Like, I was always kind of beefing with the emo kids, we just didn't really get along too well. And I had plenty of stories about them being weird, but ever since I kind of wrapped up that, like, set of stories or whatever, I hadn't really talked about emo kids much recently. So, this morning I'm scrolling through my Instagram DMs, and I see a a message that goes a little something like this. I don't know who you think you are, but making fun of emo kids twice a week is too far. Me and my emo friends are gonna come beat you up. And you know, I was feeling a little bit mischievous this morning, so I click on the kid's profile and come to find out he is legitimately like an emo kid, okay? I don't know how old he is now, but uh, he has pictures from like 2012 of him being emo, and he's still emo to this day, alright? Like, it really was not a phase for him. When his mom was like, no son, I don't want to let you dye your hair black and change your name to Alkari. Uh, and he said it's not a phase. He really meant it. Like, he's been emo for a minute. So, I'm going through his page, and I realize he lives in my town. Like, he lives in, in the city I'm from, Las Vegas. So, I'm kind of like, oh... Whatever, I'm gonna mess with him. Like, I, I just think it's funny to mess with people. Here's this emo kid that is very clearly upset that I've made fun of emo kids on my YouTube channel, which, to be honest, I've had plenty of people get mad at me for videos that I've posted. I don't really care. I'm gonna post what I wanna post, and if you don't like it, you don't gotta watch it, you know? That's at least just my opinion. I don't wanna offend anybody, but if you have a problem with me telling stories about emo kids, like, that sucks, get over it, because I'm not changing. So when he says him and his emo friends are gonna come beat me up and that, you know, oh, I shouldn't make fun of emo kids twice a week. It's all too far. I decide to respond with uh, this. 
Just a nice, simple, don't care version, because I honestly do not care, and if you have the free time to message me on Instagram to tell me that making fun of emo kids is too far, then you are probably also a virgin, you know? And, uh, he decides to respond with <laughs> something that actually, you know, gets a little bit too crazy for my personal taste, you know? Don't care virgin is a meme, it's just a joke, like, it's just kinda, you know, haha, don't care. And, uh, he responds to don't care with this. I live in Las Vegas, okay, you spelt it wrong, but I- I get what you're saying, and I will literally find you. Don't think I won't. And, um, the only reason that this actually concerned me, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, I go back to his Instagram just to see, you know, I'm like, okay, hypothetically, if he does hunt me down since we live in the same cities, can I take him in a fight, you know? And I'm looking at his geo-tagged pictures, like the pictures on Instagram that have a location, and I realize, this guy lives pretty close to me, okay? Like, we're not neighbors or anything, it's not like he could care at me, but I'm just saying, me and him could bump into each other at Whole Foods, you know what I mean? Like, we, we could bump into each other, I'm getting some organic milk, cause I don't know, I, I like cereal or whatever, he's there like, I get milk to make my heart black, I bumped into him, now it's really awkward, because uh, now he does know where I live, and I don't really want that, so I kinda wait for him to to respond and he follows that message up with this emo isn't just a phase or phrase he said phrase but I'm 95% sure they meant phase it's a culture also I get way more girls than you do LMAO so don't call me virgin yeah I'm my bad bro my bad so, where there was once worry about running into him in Whole Foods, now I'm kinda like, oh, dude, this guy just said that being emo isn't a phase, it's a culture. Like, you know, somewhere out there is like, Native Americans that are like, our culture is great, but you have not seen the rich culture of the emo kid. Yes, hate your parents, even though you live in an upper middle class suburb, haha. -ha. Like, you know, I, I don't really think it's a culture. You can't really, like, I, I think culture is something very deeply rooted in a society. I don't, I don't feel like emo culture is like a thing. I mean, it is, but it's not like a culture. The way he is implying it is not true. So, and, and the fact that he, like, needed to make sure that I knew that he has girls. Like, I was like, oh, this guy won't do it. Even if this guy meets me in public, bro, he'll shake my hand and tell me he likes my videos. Like, this guy is not gonna do anything. So I decided to mess with him a little bit more, and, uh, I send him, I send him this. Damn, bro, that's crazy, but I don't remember asking. Just because I knew that would annoy him, like, I was just kind of at this point, I'm kind of baiting him. I'm like, all right, this guy's threatening to come beat me up in person, you know, he's flexing on me, he's saying that his culture is being invaded, so I, I just send that to, to, to bait him a little bit, I can't lie. And, uh, he opens it, and for about 20 minutes doesn't respond, man, so he's sitting there thinking, he's like, how do I respond that makes me seem like the alpha male here, okay? What do I have to type to make him be intimidated? He's there he's typing he's backing out he's typing he's backing out and i'm entertained i'm in a discord call with a couple other youtubers and i'm kind of telling them what's going on and i'm like oh he's typing he's typing he's typing and he'd stop typing like this guy took forever i mean forever 20 minutes to formulate a response to damn bro that's crazy but i don't remember asking which arguably is one of the easiest memes to deflect you just ignore it like you you can't respond you can't win when somebody starts dropping memes into an actual argument okay like you just can't and after 20 minutes he responds with oh wow the classic reply with a meme because i'm a beta male who can't use logic and reasoning approach nice one as if you know this petty argument over my usage of emo kids in clickbait is a ben shapiro compilation this kid's acting like he's gonna up Upload these DMs to YouTube with the title Scrubby Destroyed with Facts and Logic. Like, dude, listen. We are beefing about memes in the Instagram DMs, bro. There is no facts and logic. Like, if you wanted facts and reasoning, you could have hit me up with a lawsuit, you know, but you didn't. You came into my Instagram DMs and told me you were gonna beat me up in Whole Foods, bro. I, I don't I don't understand what you mean by logic and reasoning. Logically, you went, this kid makes YouTube videos about stuff. Better fight him. Like, that was your logical jump, but whatever, whatever. So, I decided to follow up me getting destroyed by facts and logic with a classic meme of 50 Cent doing what 50 Cent does, throwing up two middle fingers to signify what I think about his opinion. And that's it. He stops responding. He reads it and just stops responding. And at this point, I'm like, ah, uh, it's over. No big deal. No harm, no foul. I go about my day, you know, I get some Taco Bell. I play some video games. I'm really just vibing out. I'm just chilling. I'm, I'm getting ready for the holidays, you know, got to get ready to deal with all my family, see my crazy uncle, like all that type of stuff, right? I'm really just vibing. No, no big deal. There shouldn't be any problems. 
That's what I logically thought, you know? I thought that there wasn't going to be anything else. But a couple hours later, I'm sitting in Discord with the same group of people, and they go, Hey, did that kid ever respond again? Like, did he ever send anything else? And I go, No, I don't think so. Let me check. And I open up my phone, and I see arguably the weirdest Instagram DMs I have ever seen in my entire life. I summon the power of Balthazar to curse you to never be able to find love. You will be doomed to go through life alone and never be able to find the one true mate who will fulfill you. Yeah, that's right. Apparently, uh, Emo, Emo Benson over here is also Harry Potter, bro. Homie went to Hogwarts and can summon the power of Balthazar. I don't even know what Balthazar is, bro. I don't, probably some, like, D&D &D character that he plays on the weekend. I love D&D, &D, by the way. I actually play it. That's why I made that reference. It's a good game. But, you know, that sounds like a D&D &D character. Uh, regardless, you know, he, he DMs me this, and I'm kind of like, what's going on? And then I scroll down a little bit more, and this is the picture attached to it. Homie sent the whole pentagram to my DMs after summoning Balthazar. So at this point, I'm pretty sure that the emo kid in my DMs that I said, damn bro, that's crazy, but nobody's asking, uh, summon the demon to hunt me down and destroy me. I feel like that's just a pretty far way to take a fight, bro. Like, listen, I understand. There's some people I don't agree with, you know. I bet you one of you guys watching this right now likes Miracle Whip more than normal mayonnaise, you know? And uh, I disagree with you, and trust me, I, I don't want to have anything to do with you. You're subhuman in my eyes. But I don't want to put, like, a curse on you, you know? I'm, I'm really not just trying to vibe out and curse people that disagree with me on everything. Like, look, I'm sorry, man. I made fun of emo kids. I sent you a picture of 50 Cent. That was my bad. That was my bad. Maybe I overstepped my line a small amount. I didn't realize that 50 Cent was this controversial. I thought he was a pretty cool dude. I, I mean, I, that's what I thought. There's memes about him. His tweets are funny. I didn't think there was any big deal by it, and I deeply apologize if I have offended you, because I feel like you're probably watching this video, but man, I, I feel like a curse is just a little bit too far, you know? Like, I, I feel like you might have overstepped your lines a little bit. On the scale of summoning Satan to destroy your enemies, I feel like being funny in Instagram DMs is pretty low on that level. So, uh, that's my bad. I also love, like, <laughs> Balthazar, bro. Why, why, why do demons have just the lamest names, dude? There's never a demon named, like, Heartbreaker. It's always, like, Balthazar or, like, uh, Muriel. No one's afraid of something named Muriel, you know? I just feel like being afraid of Muriel is, is weird. It's just weird. Regardless, though, you know, uh, I guess if I upload tomorrow, you know that I haven't been smited out by Balthazar and his anger. So, uh, that's a good thing. So, uh, when I was in college, I only had, like, one kind of girlfriend, and she ended up being a little bit of a psychopath, but that's a story somewhere on my channel. I don't even remember what I titled it. Probably, uh, she tried to put a curse on me or something, because she was a little bit bizarre, you know? And, uh, I, I have a weird thing for emo girls, okay? I don't want to explain myself. I don't want to have to try to explain it. it. It's something I'm not proud of, so please stop bullying me in the comment section. But anyways, I was dating this girl for a, uh, a, a little bit. And for some reason, every emo guy at my college decided that, you know, they just had to have her for herself. And they would smite me like Bambi's mother off the face of the earth to do so. And, uh, you know, to be honest, they probably could have just walked up and been like, Ayo, I, uh, I, I make witchcraft with your girlfriend. And I would have been like, hmm, what now? My, my girlfriend's a witch? Yeah, uh, you can have her, dog. Um, because, you know, I didn't know these things until the very end. But regardless, guys would always try to steal my girlfriend. But <laughs> this one actually is a classic because his threat to me on how he was going to steal my girlfriend actually might have been the weirdest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. So when I was dating this girl, she started telling me about this guy that she had in one of her classes that had a big crush on her. And that's always been a pet peeve of mine like if, if I'm dating you and you're gonna tell me about this one guy who really wants to date you don't expect me to be hyped about it don't expect me to be like oh that's sick I love that like a it's annoying you're dating me B I don't want to know that dudes are hitting on you like if I was dating someone and I went haha there's a fangirl in the comment who wants to date me like it's just unnecessary and a little bit like rude you know because uh I'm supposed to be your boyfriend, it shouldn't matter that there's some, uh, emo kid in your class trying to date you. But, whatever, my girlfriend would always tell me about this one guy that was trying to date her, and I tried my best to act like it didn't bug me, but it, it definitely did. So, uh, after a little bit of her telling me all about this guy and how he was constantly hitting on her and stuff, I decided that, um, you know, I was just gonna, I was just gonna go to class with her one day and see what this guy was all about. So I walk in, and I'm not even kidding you, 
this guy took being emo to a whole new level, all right? He basically looked like a walking Hot Topic poster from 2008, down to just the minute details, you know? Like, we were in college, we were all adults, but he still hated his parents a little bit too much. But regardless, here is this grown man sitting there in what could only be described as a walking, talking representation of 2008 emo culture, you know? Some real raw X deep type of stuff. And as soon as I see him, I'm like, oh, this is the guy that's hitting on you? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Like, I wasn't even threatened, all right? I'm sorry, but if you leave me for a guy still wearing a Cookie Monster hat in 2017, you, you deserve the L of a lifetime, all right? Like, you deserve to just take this L right on the chin here. I'll hand it to you. I'll print it out on cardboard so it lasts longer. I'll laminate it. Like, that L is sticking with you for a while, so, so that's fine. And uh, whatever. After class, he walks up to her. She starts talking. She introduces me to him. And, and this kid, like, straight up, uh, out of some Yu-Gi-Oh! Dragon Ball Z uh, trash talk goes... I bet you I could best you in combat. And I'm like, uh, what, dude? Like, uh, let, let me get this straight. You meet someone in person, and you start talking about besting them in combat. What is this, the Dark Ages, 1973? Um, uh, maybe a little bit more than that, like when they had gladiators and stuff? Do you honestly think I'm afraid of being challenged to combat by a guy who is somehow skinnier than me, even though I'm the skinniest person to ever exist? I don't think so, you know? I, I ride or die with the cause, and I'm telling you, dude, I would clap you. But regardless, he is sitting there talking about how he could best me in combat as if he's a vampire, you know? Like, oh, what? Were you an extra in Twilight? Did they teach you how to use your fangs to do absolutely nothing? Because that's what it's looking like, dude. So anyways, here's this kid talking about besting me in combat in front of my girlfriend, and I'm just kind of making fun of him, but in a way that he doesn't realize I'm making fun of him with, you know? Like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, yeah, did you learn uh, your fighting techniques from Naruto? Like, clearly being sarcastic, but homeboy here clearly missed the course on uh, sarcasm because he's like, no. I learned it from, and then he says some anime I'd never heard of before. Okay, I'm not a weeaboo. I apologize to any anime fans out there. I am sadly not an expert at the anime memes. Uh, I know that drastically disappoints about 93% of you, but it's the truth. So, regardless, th that's what's going on. This kid, I'm just kind of making fun of him, and it's just going right over the top of his head. But uh, he's still talking about how, you know, he, he studies um, the blade, like a katana. I, I, don't, I don't know. It was the definition of everything you've ever thought is cringe in one person, all right? Like, honestly, if this guy and Morg sat in a room together, the cringe overload might actually make Fukushima look like a tiny little spill. We're talking a nuclear holocaust of cringe here, and that's on a good day. Like, if everything goes perfectly, uh, it might not be that bad, but uh, on a normal day, it's gonna be a cringe catastrophe. So obviously, I keep making fun of him, and afterwards, I kind of tell my girlfriend, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. You can hang out with that guy any day of the week, because, um... I'm not threatened at all, right? So, whatever. I guess for some reason or another, the teacher ends up making a group project in that class and puts them in a group together. And obviously, I'm not super pleased with that. Like, you don't ever want your girlfriend to be hanging out with a dude that has a crush on her uh, all the time, especially for an assignment, you know? Like, if, if a guy has a crush on your girlfriend, a girl has a crush on your boyfriend, and you hear that they're gonna have to spend time together in text, it doesn't make you too happy, obviously. Like, sure, I wasn't threatened by a man who was quoting Naruto and telling me he studies the blade and could best me in combat, but at the same time, if I had the choice to not let my girlfriend hang out with a guy who's constantly trying to date her, that would have been a good option too. Either way, I was fine. But, you know, she has to give him his phone number so they can work together in the group, and, uh, whatever. She starts showing me the text he's sending her, and he's getting increasingly flirty, and keep in mind, she knows that she has a boyfriend and he's met me, and, like, obviously we didn't get off on the right foot and I made fun of him a little bit, however, Texting a guy or a girl with a boyfriend and being like, hey, you're cute, we should go on a date, isn't cool. So, I'm seeing these texts because she's showing them to me, and, she, and the texts are basically like, you know, I'm sure your boyfriend isn't, like, a real man. I'm gonna go pro on this video game, and when I do that, I'll be making tons of money, and we can be together. So, I, I asked my girlfriend out of curiosity, I'm like, okay, what video game is he, like, gaming? You know, what, what is he gonna go pro and make all this money to run away with you into the sunset with? And she says CSGO. And, um, at this point... I'm pretty confident. Like, I've been playing Counter-Strike since I was about nine years old. It's, it's my favorite game of all time, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I'm pretty damn good at it, all right? Like, I, I can clap some kids on a Counter-Strike. So, obviously, I kind of am just like, oh, that that's cool. Um, but in the back of my head, I'm like, I'm better than this kid at his own game, I guarantee it. So, anyways, he keeps trying to flirt with my girlfriend, and finally, I've had enough. So, he sends her another text where he's like, Hey, you know, after this project, can we go on a date? And my girlfriend says no, and he, and, uh, 
basically he implies that I'm being too controlling and that like he I should just let my girlfriend go on a date with another dude and um shockingly I am not a fan of my girlfriend dating other dudes I am not not a one steak sauce in the hood with my girlfriend going on a date with another man it's just not something that I find intriguing or interesting like I'd give it about a uh, negative five out of ten is how I would rate uh, someone else dating my girlfriend you know there's a reason she's my girlfriend and not yours and it's because she's not dating other people so I text him, I basically tell him, hey, your dream of going pro in Counter-Strike is stupid. Stop hitting on my girlfriend. She's not going to leave you even if you go make crazy esports money. So uh, if you could stop texting her, I'd appreciate it. I'm going to talk to the teacher. or I told her, I told him that she was going to talk to the teacher because I wasn't cool with this anymore. And that uh, their group project was basically over. Because, you know, I let it slide once or twice. If you keep asking my girlfriend on a date for a group project, I I'm not cool with it. I'm really not. I'm really, really just not cool with it. Especially after the girl said no. You know, like she was like, hey, can you stop? It makes me uncomfortable. And if you keep going, now it's an issue. Now you're just being a creeper. But whatever. He starts trash talking me back and basically says, We're going to 1v1 on Counter Strike. And if I beat you, then I get to date your girlfriend. And I, you know, being the absolute savage I am, uh, said, Yes, let's do this. And I know what you guys are thinking. Scrubby, oh my god, you bet your girlfriend on a CSGO match? Yeah. I did, and it was funny, and you laughed a little bit when you heard it, and uh, I'm not going to apologize, because it's hilarious. Realistically, even if I lost, my girlfriend was obviously not going to go date this guy because she wasn't interested, but regardless, I thought it would be funny. So the time comes, and uh, we do our 1v1 in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and I absolutely split this kid's skull open and beat him like 16-2 to 2 in the 1v1 server. It was a wingman map. We were playing 1v1, for those of you curious, and uh, you know... After that, he was honorable, probably because of all the anime he watched. He stopped texting her and never talked to me again. So, uh, moral of the story is, pro gamer emo kids will definitely try to steal your girlfriend and beat you in combat. But the good news is, they're usually really bad at everything you do, so you can just challenge them to a 1v1 on their favorite video game, beat them, and then your girlfriend stays yours. Uh, yeah. That, that, that's a really weird moral of a story. Not quite sure it has many applications anywhere else in life, but regardless, that's the moral of the story. Now, I don't know what it is with emo kids, but for some reason they just constantly have beef with me, okay? I don't know if it's because I enjoy my life and I smile a lot, but like all these emo kids that are definitely out there, oh, my mom's the worst, I just want to leave my insanity. For some reason, they just all have some massive beef with me. And trust me, I used to be a cringy emo kid. I get it. Everybody goes through phases. But for some reason, ever since I left my cringy emo phase, all these kids have wanted to spaddle to the death like Spartans, all right? Like, they're really going to show up with a Hot Topic shirt on the tip of a spear going, ooh rah rah ooh rah rah and challenge me to death by combat. Like, that's basically the situation I've been having with most emo kids lately. And uh, this latest story is definitely no exception to that. So it's no secret that I was on vacation for like the last two weeks. I spent some time in California. I spent some time in Lake Tahoe with my family. And, uh, you know, for the most part, it was a really, really enjoyable vacation. I had myself the time of my life. I didn't light anyone on fire. I didn't hit anyone with a car. You know, it was a standard two weeks for me. But uh, my little brother, who's 13, definitely got a little bit lonely and started trying to make friends when we were hanging out on the beach. And one of the friends he made was this weird emo kid. And I mean, he he was a weirdo, all right? I'm not one to judge based on appearance, but he looked like, uh, what what's the purple guy from McDonald's? You know, the really chunky one that looks kind of like a potato. Yeah, he looked like that, but with emo hair. Like, the person I have in the thumbnail is a pretty accurate representation of what this guy looked like and uh we're on the beach, you know, where it's hot and sunny, and this kid is wearing jeans with his emo-colored hair and just talking about how hard life is, you know, because uh, that, that, that's what emo kids do. And listen, like I said, you do you, man, but wearing jeans on the beach just makes you look stupid. Like, oh, uh, yeah, let's go to this nice weather and this beautiful place and uh, hate my life. Like, if you're going to hate your life that much, just stay indoors, okay? Nobody cares that you hate your life. Just stay inside. Don't ruin anybody else's day, and we're going to have a good time. But whatever, this emo kid is just incessantly whining on the beach about how hard life is. So uh, I finally start talking to him and we're talking and I think the kids may be 13 like he looks like a chubby toddler All right, he looks like a balloon that got a little bit too blown up and had a, a face drawn on it That's what this kid looks like. I know. Oh, that's so mean. Yeah, it's a, it's a little mean deal with it Okay, but whatever so I'm talking to him and come to find out. I think this kid's 13. He's not 13 No, no, no This kid is 17 years old and just happens to look like a 12 year old who had way too much McDonald's piped down his throat But like the black McDonald's, you know like like when the burgers are colored black or is that Burger King? I don't know one fast food restaurant makes their buns black for like a month for Halloween And that's what it looks like he's been eating because he's basically peeing out how terrible his life is every 15 seconds whining incessantly about how hard life is 
and I'm talking to him, and he he's like, whatever. So uh, the conversation eventually turns to what we like want to do with our lives, and I kind of just so nah, I'm gonna be a YouTuber. And he goes, you know, you look really familiar. Can I uh, can can you like tell me your channel? What is it? You look familiar. So I told him that I was Scrubby, and immediately his face contorts into what can only be described as a pucker fish sucking on a sour lemon head while figuring out that his mom just got curb stomped by the Dalai Lama in Nepal. All right, like he looks tetrified, disgusted putrefied, puking at the very sound of scrubby coming out of my mouth. And he looks at me and with his little emo eyes, flips a little bit of hair out of the way because uh, his hair was covering his eyes and said, the scrubby who makes fun of emo kids? And I kind of laughed and went, yeah. And he just like immediately gets up, walks over, gets in my face and is like, how dare you respect my culture? All right, man. Yeah, didn't know you were a culture. You know, those Lithuanians, those pex, those pesky Latinos are competing with emo kids for the most rich culture in America. Like, I'm sorry. Your little group is not a culture. If you're from a country, if you're from a place, that's a culture. You know, if, if, you're, if your family's from Mexico and you have traditions from there, that's a culture. If your family's from, you know, Norway and you have traditions, that's a culture. If you're emo, that's not a culture. What is your culture? Whining about how easy it is to live in America while listening to My Chemical Romance? Like, Let's be realistic here. Uh, it's not a culture, okay? It's just not. But whatever. Like I said, I used to be an emo kid. I get it. And if you want to listen to those bands, that's fine. But when people take it too far and start trying to pretend that emo kids are their own country, you know, like they're just going to secede from the union and cause another civil war, it just makes me laugh. So I'm just laughing at the kid. And he's like, it's not funny. How dare you? I had so many friends that feel bullied by you. And I was like, listen, if, uh, if your friends feel bullied by me and I didn't even talk about them directly then your friends need a little bit thicker skin, dude. Like, it's very obvious whenever I make fun of something on my channel. It's not personal. Like, I'm really not sitting here. Ha, I hope that every emo kid stops being emo because I made fun of them on TikTok. Like, uh, maybe just don't get offended. Is, is that too hard to hear? If someone on the internet making fun of what you like makes you not like it, it's probably not something you like very much anyways. If somebody came along and was like, ugh, I hate story times, they're stupid. I wouldn't quit doing story times, that's just dumb. But whatever, this kid is getting dramatically butthurt at the fact that I exist and I make YouTube videos where I make fun of emo kids, you know? It's almost like I punched his grandmother in the face with a lit candle. That is what this kid is acting like I just did. So uh, as he's whining about how I'm bullying people, I kind of just look at him and say, Look, dude, you know, you're friends with my brother. I really don't care what you have to say. So uh, if you're going to keep whining, please go do it elsewhere. And that just livid, like, that. that is what makes him single-handedly believe that I am the reincarnation of Godzilla running through the streets of Tokyo, destroying every building. He says, how dare you, you have to respect my opinion, and I'm like, I don't have to respect your opinion if I feel like your opinion sucks. Which is just true. I'm sorry, I hate to break it to you. Everybody out there who's like, uh, it's my opinion. If your opinion sucks and it's like, it's bad opinion, no one has to like it, you know? You have the right to say it, it doesn't mean we have to enjoy it. But whatever, I tell him I really just don't care what he has to say and I'm gonna keep making my videos and I, I really just could not care less if this kid is offended that I make fun of emo kids. And uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is when he really snaps. You might think whining like a Karen in a grocery store asking for my manager is too far. But no, no, no. Next thing I know, he gets up and starts charging towards me from across the sand. This, like, 17-year-old kid is charging me. And not to mention, as I said, he was a little husky, you know, a little bit chubby. So I'm watching the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man emo edition come charging at me from halfway across the beach, screaming about how he's going to beat me up. Like, uh, uh, yeah, dude, maybe if you sit on me and fart in my mouth, I might actually take some damage. But considering you have the speed and dexterity of an African elephant charging across the savannah, something tells me I'm gonna end up okay here. Like, call me crazy, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be fine. All I have to do is sidestep and your momentum's gonna keep you going. And I know someone's in the comments, you are bullying him, okay? I wasn't saying this out loud while I was getting charged by a husky emo kid. And honestly, if you try to attack me on the beach, I have the right to make fun of you. That's, that's the trade-off. You try to beat me up, I get to call you a fat emo kid. That's just how the world works okay I don't make the rules I just follow them so whatever this kid's charging at me and I'm trying not to laugh because uh, just just imagine being in my shoes here comes a chubby emo kid running Mach 10 towards you while screaming that he's gonna beat you up and try to keep a straight face it, it's basically impossible so I kind of get up and I just kind of move out of the way and he's just like <gasps> breathing heavy by the time he gets to me and he, he sits there and he's like trying to swing on me but he's just missing I don't know if he had never been in a fight before maybe life was real tough and uh, he never really learned how 
how to fight from anyone or had never seen a movie ever because his punches were basically just flying everywhere. And I just kind of tell him like, hey man, calm down. Like, it's okay, cool it. And he's like, how dare you tell me to calm down? So, uh, yeah, now I'm in the middle of a beach with a chubby emo kid on the verge of tears because he ran 20 feet, crying while saying he's gonna beat me up and, uh, telling me how dare I tell him to calm down. So I do the only logical thing a human being could do, and I look at him and say, you know, man, this was real pathetic. Real pathetic. And I just start walking back towards our, uh, beach house. And the kid's like, get back here! I wasn't done with you! And I just kind of turn around and went, look, dude, I'm, I'm not gonna fight you for uh, a multitude of reasons. First of all, I think I might actually give you a heart attack. Second of all, you're like 17. Third of all, uh, I don't even know what we're fighting about, bro. Like, I, I, yeah, I made fun of emo kids once or twice. That's, that's, that's literally it. I'm not gonna fight you for this. But of course, he starts telling me that tomorrow when I'm on the beach, I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna beat you up. And I'm like, all right, well, in that case, I guess we'll fight tomorrow. And I, and I went in and I uh, read a book for a while. And sure enough, the next day I'm out there chilling on the beach and Harriet Tubman walks right on up to me and starts talking to me. And the first things out of his mouth is, I'm sorry, I got a little out of it, I just, uh, I deal a lot with bullies at home, and, you know, I went back and watched your videos, and you're not really a bully, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for almost attacking you, and I was like, yeah, dude, you know, it's, it's just not every day that a chubby emo kid runs me down on the beach to try to beat me up, it's a common occurrence for me, you would be surprised. So, uh, yeah, chubby emo kid basically tried to attack me on the beach, and, uh, that's just how it is sometimes, you know? He apologized, we were fine, like, I don't have any personal beef with the kid, okay? And if he watches this video, and he's like, ah, you're being mean, yeah, 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 you tried to attack me, okay? Like, that, that's, that's the trade-off, that's the 1v1 no-scope-only mentality. Uh, but... On a serious note, guys, uh, don't fight 17-year-old chubby kids on the beach because chances are it's going to make you look bad. Could you imagine that drama alert title? YouTuber Scrubby facing charges after beating up child on the beach. Like, it, it was just not going to end well for anyone involved. Uh, but in reality, you know, you know, sometimes uh, chubby emo kids are just going to try to jump you, and that's part of life. So instead of going to college, just prepare. Take Taekwondo, uh, hold something bright, colorful, and happy, and they'll run away in the other direction. I don't really know what you can do to defend yourself from emo kids but at least try. Today we're going to be talking about the cringiest kid that I had in my class. I have a lot of cringy kid stories, okay? I have this person, I have a girl who swore that she was the, the next big Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, teen social media star that I'm probably going to talk about tomorrow. We're bringing it back, baby. We're going to my roots. We're going to talk about some old-fashioned cringe. But today we're going to be talking about an emo kid. There was a lot of emo kids at my school. I don't know why it was. Like, my school had a really good theater program and we had, like, a magnet program for it. So a lot of kids at our school were there for theater. And I don't know what it is about theater kids, but for some reason reason they just have a very high emo population it's probably the fact they have to listen to other theater kids sing so much that makes them want to hate their life but you know regardless for some reason at my school there was a massive amount of emos and uh i don't know i don't really hate my life like i'm not an emo kid by any means i went through a bad bad emo phase in middle school but i think by the time you're 17 18 years old you could probably grow out of the no oh, i hate my life when you're from an upper middle class neighborhood like it's just kind of cringy to be like uh life's so hard my dad bought me a new toyota instead of a mercedes Mercedes, uh. But regardless, there were plenty of those kids in my school who would just find a way to hate their life. I don't know. It, it was an emo cringe squad. They actually did not get along with the werewolf crew. I made another story time a while ago about kids. There was like this werewolf group at my school that was super weird. But regardless, you know, there was a lot, a lot of emo kids and they had their very own clique and they were like a little gang almost, except instead of, you know, being intimidating and being able to like fight and run the yard like a real gang, they would just complain a lot and sing My Chemical Romance lyrics at the top of their lungs in the hallway. And God, like, why, why do people sing in the hallway if they can't sing? If you are tone deaf and sound like, I don't know, Helen Keller trying to sing the alphabet, just don't open your mouth. You don't have to sing. No one's going to be impressed with you. You're not good at singing, and that's okay. Not everyone is good at singing at the end of the day, so shut up. Just go to class. You don't need to sing in the hallway. But for some reason, emo kids would always, like, sing in the hallway. I'm getting off topic here. I'm gonna get back on now. That's important. But, uh, if you can't sing, don't sing. It's really simple. But regardless, this gang of emo theater kids would hang out in the in the front of the lunchroom, like, in this little courtyard thing we had in our school. And, uh, they had a leader. And this was the type of kid, like, he literally looked like the dude in the thumbnail, all right? He would wear eyeshadow to school every day and, like, these weird designs. He had contacts that made his eyes white. The ultimate cringy edgelord. Like, if someone was like, ah, oh, write down what you think the meaning of life is in English class you'd be like life is meaningless it's just an illusion of happiness uh my mom hates me they my dad and my stepdad get along life's so hard 
and everybody knows. Like, listen, life is hard. I'm not trying to say that you can't go through hard times, but something about being like, I'm just gonna color shapes on my eyelashes with eyeliner and then talk about how hard my life is all the time. It's just cringy. Like, look, everybody goes through hard times. Everybody goes through stuff, but uh, it's not an excuse to use it to get attention because you don't get enough of it at home, okay? Like, cool your jets there, Benny Hanna. Y you're just like the rest of us. But regardless, the, the leader of this little emo gang would wear eyeliner and cool designs and, and he had white contacts and he would talk about how meaningless life is. It's all an empty void, deprived of all love and sensation except for the few lucky ones that managed to work as a cog in the machine. And I'm not gonna be a cog. Dude, it, it was literally like he watched a, a weird fan fiction version of The Matrix and just started quoting it. Like, uh, yeah, Neo, take the blue pill. It's all not real. It's all fake. It's not real reality. And he was like, damn, bro, that's so deep. I'm gonna start talking about how people are cogs and machines and I'm just gonna look so deep. So obviously, Mr. Deep Guy was just a cringe lord and I don't have a problem keeping my mouth, like, I, I do have a problem keeping my mouth shut. I don't have a problem calling people out when they're being cringy. I don't know why. It's just like, I, I can't. I can't deal with it. If I don't point it out, it blows my mind or I have to laugh at it. It's one of the two. Like, I can't take it seriously or I have to call it out. Like, if you really sit there, oh, life's so hard, I'm going to giggle. I'm, I can't take you seriously unless your life's hard. Like, listen, if your life's hard and you're going through a hard time and you're like, wow, you know, I'm just going through a lot. By all means, I get it. I get it. Life can be really, really hard sometimes, and that's okay. But when you color on your face to make it look like, I don't know, a four-year-old gently trying to color in the sun, like, outside the lines and stuff, and just complain about everything in your life sucking, yeah, I I'm gonna make fun of you. I'm sorry. I don't feel bad. And me and this guy really already did not get along, because it's like I said, he had a whole little crew of emo kids that were underneath him. Like, he was the emo overlord, all right? Like, when they went to Hot Topic, he got all the coupons. That was the deal. That, that probably was their deal, to be honest with you. It was something stupid like that. Regardless, he was kind of the leader of this emo gang. And I had already gotten into, like, a little bit of a scuffle. Not a fight, but just kind of, like, yelled at one of his friends and, and got his friend in trouble once in art class. So me and this guy did not get along. Me and the whole emo kids did not get along because I just, I don't know. They, they just made me cringe a lot and we got into beef, okay? That's all there was to it. Me and this guy already did not get along. And like I said, in our English class, he would write poems about how hard life is when it wasn't the assignment and then would read it in front of the class. And I'm sorry, that's just cringy. I can't take you seriously. Like, if you your assignment is to write an essay about Frankenstein and then you get up and share a haiku about how hard life is because Dan, your stepdad, watches too many NFL games with your mom so you and her can't write poetry together. That's not the assignment, bro. Cool your jets. Like, I, I don't know. It, it was just weird. So one day, homeboy is reading some poetry in front of the English class and he says something along the lines of like, no one will ever understand my pain and then rhymed it with rain and I just started laughing. And the entire classroom just turns and gives me like this dirty look. And I'm sorry, but this dude has has hieroglyphics on his forehead in eyeliner and is rhyming pain with rain while standing in front of a class in high school when the assignment was to write our thoughts and feelings about Jurassic Park, which is what we were reading. I can't take you seriously, bro. So he says to me, he's like, oh, do we have a problem here? And I'm like, no, dude, it's just kind of corny. And he's like, what's corny about my emotions? And I said, the fact that you're telling them to people you don't know. Like, you don't need to overshare with me, dude. I, I do not know you like that. Like, you don't need to tell me that you're crying every night because you miss your mom and dad or like what? I don't I don't even know. I don't think his parents even were divorced, to be fair. Like, it was... Basically, he was whining about the fact that his mom and dad didn't understand him. I was just using the stupid Dan watching NFL joke, okay? But, like, I don't know you like that. You don't need to tell me that your mom and dad don't understand you and you cry every night from the rain and the pain while you're feeling so insane. It's insufferable. Like, no one cares, dude. I don't know you. You don't You don't need to share this with me. But regardless, I kind of pointed out that it's weird that the assignment was to write our feelings about Jurassic Park and he had the need to get up and read poetry about mommy and daddy not liking him or whatever. I don't even know. And I, I obviously, he did not like this very much. He's like, it's an expression of my inner emotions. And I was like, dude, no one cares about your inner emotions. You don't know us. We don't know you. No one is sitting here going, I wonder what hieroglyphic on his forehead boy is thinking about his home life situation. Like, bro, if you got problems, go to a counselor. They have counselors at school for a reason. Me sitting here trying to read Jurassic Park, I'm not your therapist. Like, if you got issues, go talk to somebody else. And so obviously, me telling this kid to go get a therapist because his English class does not care about his problems makes him pretty pissed off because he'd been reading poetry all year and I've just been silently judging and giggling at it the entire time. So he gets all pressed and starts asking me if I have a problem, like, do I really want to take it outside or whatever? And I'm just laughing, like, I'm laughing while I'm telling him all this, because imagine some emo kid that you just said his poetry sucks and you don't care, being like, ugh, you got a problem, bro? So whatever, my English teacher gets up and says that I'm being extremely rude to him for he's just trying to share his feelings. And, and listen, I need to clarify this, because I feel like people are going to think I'm a jerk. If your feelings are hurt and, and you need somebody to vent to, 
That's cool. Don't do it in front of your entire English class when the assignment is to write about dinosaurs, okay? Like, imagine you're just sitting in class ready to write about dinosaurs and a book about dinosaurs in an amusement park. And then Homeboy starts pulling up, rapping, and crying about, Oh, my, my life's so hard. Like, it's just not the time and the place. There's a time and the place to talk about your feelings. And in front of a bunch of strangers who don't care is, is not the time or the place. It's just not cool. Like, you're just weird. Like I said, go talk to your friends. I know you have a whole crew of emo kids that would listen to your problems. That's that's not me. But whatever, I guess I was the rude one. She tells me to go out in the hallway while he finishes his poem, and I'm like, gladly, dude, anything to get away from this bar fest. So I go out in the hallway and whatever, and I come back in, and she's like, you need to apologize. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not gonna apologize. I don't feel bad. I would apologize if I felt bad, if I really felt like I did something wrong, but me just telling the kid to do the assignment, shut up, write about dinosaurs, and not write about his problems is nothing I'm, I'm not going to apologize. And she's like, Ryan? You need to apologize. I'm like, I'm not going to apologize. That that I'm sorry. It's not personal, except it is. I don't care about your problems and your constant whining about them. I'm not going to apologize to you because I have nothing to be sorry for. And he says, it's fine. Simpletons don't understand the deep art of poetry. Which I mean, you know what? Fine. Maybe I was a bit of a jerk for whining about this kid's poetry. But if you're going to call me stupid for not understanding your poetry... I, I know you're not talking to me. We're just gonna pretend that you didn't rhyme pain with rain, like the most basic white boy Tumblr poetry of all time. Oh, you think I didn't notice that? You thought you were really slick, huh? That's right, everybody. He rhymed pain with rain and had the balls to say that I was too simple-minded to understand it. So that pisses me off, because if you're gonna call me stupid, at least point out something stupid I've done. I've done a lot of stupid things. There's plenty of things to call me stupid for. But saying your poetry is so complex I can't understand it when you ride pain with rain is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. And I let him know what I think by just telling him, Dude, I'm not stupid. Your poetry just sucks balls. Where's my exact words? Which, of course, does not go over well. Uh, because I had one of these English teachers that was convinced that everybody deserves stories and everybody deserves to have their voice heard. Truth of the matter is, if you suck at poetry, don't write poetry. And if you rhyme pain with rain to tell me about your problems, your poetry blows, and I have no, no reason to want to listen to it at all. But I guess I pushed Cringe Lord's button a little bit too hard because that's it. And he goes, Honestly, man, you really just don't know who you're messing with bro and i'm like oh yeah right vampiric touch hot topic poster looking ass i am not afraid of you and he's like whatever i guess we'll settle this at lunch and i'm like then i guess we will settle this at lunch you freak and before anyone's like oh he's so mean you're, he's so mean you're a big bully yeah i make fun of people you're right if you're cringy and i call you out and then you have the balls to call me stupid for not understanding your garbage poetry i'm gonna be mean i'm not gonna be nice to you he was mean too shut up you can see the comment now maybe you're just a bully maybe you should shut up you, you ever thought about that and for everybody who's not commenting i'm a bully and agrees with me that it's not my job to listen to crappy poetry. Thank you for having a brain. But regardless, you know, he's saying that uh, we, we're gonna settle this at lunch. So I'm like, all right, I guess we're gonna settle this at lunch. And I totally forget about it because that's like second period and I had lunch after fourth period. So to be honest with you, I was not expecting to walk into lunch and see some emo kids ready to fight me. I was just not ready for it. I go to lunch, I do my thing, I'm eating lunch with my friends, and I feel this darkness behind me, like this dark voodoo energy. And I turn around, and sure enough, Emo Boy and his whole gang is sitting there. And they're just kind of chilling, and he's looking at me, and he goes, are you ready to settle this? I'm like, what What are we settling, bro? And he's like, you disrespected my poetry, so I challenge you to combat. This emo kid said, challenge you to combat, like I'm an 18th century senator trying to 1v1 flintlock pistol only in an ultimate battle to the death. Yeah, I challenge you to combat, bro. Get your Mortal Kombat 3 looking nose out of here, dude. You look like a Matrix backup character. And whatever, I'm just not in the mood to deal with this right now. Like, I'm, I'm really just not. I'm like, dude, I don't want to fight you. And he's like, oh, what? You're going to talk about my poetry and then not fight me? And I was like, yeah, I mean, kind of. It's That's the plan. And he goes, get up. And he, like, takes my chair and dumps me out of it. Like, picks up the back and, like, pushes it. He doesn't, like, pick up the chair, but you know what I mean? Like, when you push the chair up and the person kind of slides out of it and at this point i'm getting pissed and i'm like dude can you just knock it off please and i am by no means a fighter i don't consider myself a fighter I, I i have not won many fights by any means i've been in a few have not won many i think i probably got a 50 percent win loss rate when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat situations okay i am definitely not a Fortnite player out here beating people to death with a pickaxe but i know for a fact that i can beat this kid up because he is the only person in the world who is skinnier than me and also writes poetry and i know i can beat up a dude who writes poetry that rhymes rain with pain i know that for a fact so i turn around and i'm like if you want to do this we can do this and he goes i want nothing more and like drops into a combat stance like you know when they do the squat like arm above the head at a 90 degree angle looking like you watched a bruce lee movie and went oh so that's how you fight like that is what this dude looks like and so i'm laughing again and he goes to try to kick me in the face he goes for just a kick in the face 
That was his opening move, all right? Like, he was playing chess, and his opening move was kick to the forehead, 99 points of damage. This is not a Pokemon battle. And of course, he is by no means athletic. He has not had any, like, martial arts training. So I just step back, and his foot misses my face. And I give him this weird look, like, did you just try to kick me in the face? I didn't say it, but this, the look of, like, really? Really, dude? Really? And he gets back in the combat stance and says, let it begin. Like, I don't know where this dude got his fight interaction from, but he was no joke acting like we were a final boss in a video game. 1v1 here and it just made me even angrier I was like this dude looks like a gremlin and he's just jumping around like rah, rah, combat rah, 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 boss fight rah. so whatever he's in this combat stance walking in circles around me like like they do in a kung fu movie I'm telling you that's the only fight experience this kid has had is watching people fight in kung fu movies and he does the thing with his hand like the come here movement like where you take your hand and you put your palm up and you go like ho ho come here combat me please ho ho and I'm like, dude, this is, this is whatever. So whatever. He gets up and starts charging at me. And like I said, he's doing all this fancy combat stuff. He's doing like the come here movement. And he gets close to me and I just punch him in the face, like as hard as I can. And I hit him square in the nose and his nose starts to bleed. And I didn't even mean to hit him. Like, like, okay, I did. Obviously when I went to punch him, my goal was to hit him. But I swear the kid acted like I like unlocked my secret double extra YY combat move to just extra, extra punch him just in the face because he like pulls back and goes, huh? a worthy opponent and i'm like dude this is not an anime we are fighting shut up stop talking go write a poem about how i just punched you in the nose and now it's bleeding and whatever so he's like a worthy opponent like i don't like we're the next hokage or something i don't know what's going on i'm as confused as you are but anyways this dude is like swearing that this is finally a worthy opponent haha -ha, someone to master my combat skills with so he comes back around like a ninja and i just punch him in the face again and at this point my dean is like trying to pull us apart and i'm just seeing red i'm pissed so i'm just swinging at him i'm kicking like i I'm doing everything I can to try to just beat this kid. And he's like, ah, a worthy opponent. Like, he's still talking in some anime voices. I don't know what his game plan was, but he just sounds stupid. So I'm pissed off. They finally get us apart. And he's like, well, I guess we have this settled. I was like, you lost. You lost. He's like, well, ha, huh, we'll let history be the judges of that. Like, I don't even, uh, something stupid about, I guess we'll let other people be the judge of that or whatever. And everyone agrees that I beat him up because he was doing weird stuff. I punched him in the face twice. It was not like a super intense fight. No NBA Matumbo. WWE Smackdown stuff, but it was definitely definitely a fight nonetheless I fought a crazy emo kid in one punched him in the face repeatedly, which I guess is as close to a fight as you can get Anyways, this person who sent me this story walked home from school and they would walk home with a friend of theirs who was named Jeremy and Jeremy was like, you know, uh, not the toughest kid ever, but he, he basically he was picked on a lot. That's the better way to say it. I was trying to phrase it nicely for the YouTube system here, but Jeremy was the type of kid that would get picked on a lot. So they would walk home together and it was kind of like uh, the person who sent this story was insurance for Jeremy to make sure that he would get home in one piece with like, all of his possessions and they lived on the same street and there was another kid who lived on the same street for this story I'm gonna name him uh, uh, Marcus and Marcus you know for whatever reason was a, was a little bit of an emo guy he had the hair that went down past his eyes to the point where like you weren't really sure if he could see or not if he was taking a nap in class you would really have to get close and listen to see if he was snoring or not like that type of hair dude if you ever tried to talk to him he was just constantly like life is pain existence is nothing existence is futile why do we try like you know just super fun to talk to one of those emo kids and for whatever reason marcus like hated jeremy okay he hated him i don't know if it was because it was the only person in the entire world that he knew he could beat up like marcus was not was not one in a fight against basically anybody else except for jeremy so for whatever reason these guys had beef and uh, Marcus would follow Jeremy and this person home every day from school and just like shout insults at Jeremy to try to get them to fight. They'd be like, yeah, Jeremy, your dad's stupid, dude. You won't do anything about it. Which, I mean, I, I just fair enough. Like, if you just call my dad dumb, do you really want me to fight you? Like, you, you don't know my dad, bro. Like, you, you don't know my dad. Is that supposed to hurt my feelings? But regardless, emo boy was like, constantly trying to uh you, you know cause problems and start a fight and one day they had had enough jeremy had had enough of this kid following them and constantly threatening them to fight him so jeremy stopped and turned around and is like all right man you've been trying to fight me for months following me home like let's fight 
and the emo kid is like ha yeah let's fight and so uh, it's jeremy versus marcus the emo kid and marcus's kid like emo posse had been walking with him and they're all hyping him up they're like bro marcus you're gonna straight demolish this dude like look at him he's so small he's so tiny dude like he's not even that sick how is he gonna fight you you were at like the front of the mosh pit this guy probably doesn't even go to mosh pits dude like that's how lame he is you're about to knock this dude out just hyping him up so marcus is getting all hyped he's like yeah you hear that jeremy i'm gonna smack you and jeremy you know looked like a really small kid he would get picked on a lot but something that nobody knew about jeremy he was a massive, massive fan of Taekwondo. He just didn't like to fight, which I've actually noticed that, like, the more somebody knows how to fight, the more somebody can just, like, destroy you in a fight, the less they ever want to fight. Like, somebody who knows Taekwondo doesn't have anything to prove by beating up an emo kid in the middle of the street. They're like, yeah, no, nah, I know I can do that. Like, nothing to prove. So, whatever. Jeremy's like, look, I don't want to fight you, you know, trying to back out, even though he had just gotten pissed and asked him to fight. And Marcus starts, like, calling him a chicken for trying to back out and change. Which I understand, like, if you challenge somebody, you kind of got to stick up for yourself. But I think it was more of just an anger reaction. And then this Jeremy kid is like, ah, oh, crap, I'm actually going to hurt this dude. I don't want to fight. So whatever, he's calling him a chicken. Marcus is like, Jeremy's a chicken. Jeremy's a chicken. And they go to start turn and walk away from the emo kids. And Marcus walks up behind Jeremy and just punches him in the back of the head. Like... Punches him in the back of the head, which, you come on, man, come on. How are you going to call him a chicken and then launch a surprise attack with a punch in the back of the head? Like, oh, ha ha, you are the one who will not engage me in combat. As soon as you turn around, that is when I will throw the punch to catch you off guard. Ah ha ha. Like, that's your anime arc, bro. You're going to be that one dude who's cheating in the fighting tournament at the end of the Dragon Ball Z season. Nah, nah, not, not vibing with it. So, at this point, Jeremy turns around and just puts the whooping on Marcus in front of all of his friends in front of everybody just beats the crap out of him and i do not advocate for violence violence is never the answer i'm not saying you should go fight however if somebody punches you in the back of the head while you're just trying to peacefully walk away from a situation and then tries to keep hitting you by all means you have every single right to like defend yourself i don't think that's a controversial hot take and if you think it is well then uh your opinion's just wrong but if somebody hits you in the back of the head you have every single right to defend yourself so jeremy just starts wailing on this kid like going to town on him as you do when somebody tries to jump you and finally you know the emo kids come over and they help their friend and marcus is getting pulled away and he's like i'm gonna make you pay for that dude you're gonna regret that but, you know tears running through his eyes and like there's just a flurry of black emo hair everywhere because he got in it like beat off his head you know like it was a beatdown. So, sure enough, the emo kids, like, scurry off with their tails between their legs. And uh, Jeremy is basically unscathed. He says the back of his head hurt a little bit. But, like, overall, he definitely wins the fight. And uh, word gets around relatively quickly at the school that Jeremy, this pipsqueak that everybody thought was, like, you know, this weakling that everybody was kind of picking on, low-key put the beating on this Marcus kid who was supposed to be the super tough, edgy emo dude. So... Obviously, Marcus's reputation does become a little bit damaged, which does happen when you get beat up by the school nerd, especially when you get the first punch and try to jump him. Like, listen, if this kid, Jeremy, really looked like he has asthma, you know, smaller than Stuart Little out here, and you got beat up by him after you started the fight, that's just embarrassing. Like, that that's just a fat L. I'm not really sure how you recover from this. So, he's all mad, and he walks up to Jeremy at lunch, and he's like, I'm gonna get you back like watch your back after school today and Jeremy's like look dude I don't want to have any problems. We really don't have to do this like just don't follow me home Don't do anything and he's like oh you'll see like I've already got something planned which you know kind of ominous to tell somebody that you hate like I've got something planned for you I'm pretty sure that's how you can get arrested But regardless the rest of the day uh, the person who sent in this story is nervous But Jeremy's like whatever I already beat him up once it's not like it matters so this time, they're walking home, and there's a much bigger crowd following them. You have all the emo kids following Marcus, who's been shamed, you know? He's gotten, like, the mark of disgrace because a nerdy conformist has beaten him. And now him hating his life isn't good enough, you know? Like, wow, are you even cool if you got bit up by a nerd dead? Like, I don't even know if you could be in our emo clique. So, obviously, they're getting followed home. And Marcus, like, walks up. To Jeremy and pulls out like you know a, a Swiss Army knife like not like a not like a knife knife but like a Swiss Army knife and it's like oh you think you're tough now huh how about you just give me all your money huh 
and everybody is like, yo, dude, like, chill out, chillax, chillax, and he's like, no, I'm not afraid of anything, like, you guys think that I'm afraid of him, huh, you guys think that I'm afraid of him, and he's got, like, this Swiss army knife, and Jeremy is like, look, dude, I don't want any trouble, we don't have to do this, and that's when he's like, how about you shut up, and, like, when he does that, he kind of, like, pokes this Swiss army knife into Jeremy's chest, and that's when Jeremy, dude, the absolute unit just like pops it out of his hand with a quick flick of the wrist, you know, some straight up Captain America stuff. The person who sent this in says everybody's like jaw hits the floor with the speed how he disarms this knife, summons his inner Bruce Lee, his eyes start growing like he's Avatar in Ultra Instinct, and once again just starts wailing on this dude. And now he's mad. Like last time when he was beating him up, he wasn't saying anything, but this time he's like yelling, he's like, Who do you think you are to threaten me? Like, did you not learn your lesson? Yes. Yesterday, and everybody is like oh my god just silently kind of standing there watching this go down and before anybody is like oh my gosh why didn't they stop him if you try to rob somebody I'm sorry karma happens and getting beat up might be it so obviously finally he gets pulled out and Marcus is like dude you caught me off guard like let me catch you again and everybody even the emo kids are like listen Marcus I think he's proven now that like you got him beat. You just tried to rob him with a knife, and he still just beat the crap out of you in front of everybody. How about you leave him alone? And this Marcus dude, being the emo king he is, you know, like, can't handle his ego being checked. Like, he's supposed to be the dude who doesn't care and, like, is the real savage. And here's this little kid just putting him in his place. So his ego's all bruised. He's like, whatever, dude. Like, you're lucky I didn't want to hurt you. You know, you're such a freak. Like, just trying to hurt his feelings, and Jeremy's like, yeah, yeah, whatever, man, like, mind your business, you know, like, get out of here, don't ever follow me home again, like, is pissed, and, uh, up until this point, Jeremy usually was not a very angry dude, like, he's pretty calm, but, you know, sometimes you just snap, and you gotta go off and, like, beat up somebody who's trying to rob you, it'd it be like that sometimes, so, they get home, um, since they lived on the same street, and sure enough, they're like, yo, that was crazy, and Jeremy's like, yeah, I just hope people at school don't start, like, treating me differently, you know, because there was a lot of people from the school that had been following them while this kid tried to, like, Swiss Army bank hold up, I don't know what he was doing about, and, uh, basically from that point on, uh, people did treat him differently, but, like, in a good way, all the big kids that used to pick on him and, like, mess with him, you know, started treating him with respect, he got some street cred out there, which, Listen, I understand why you wouldn't want anybody to treat you differently, but, like, if you are Bruce Lee and you can disarm somebody and you're awesome, then, like, yeah, you should probably get credit for it. People shouldn't mess with you if you're not somebody who should be messed with. So, good for him. Regardless of whether or not he wanted to get treated differently, it doesn't matter. But that wasn't the only person who started to get treated differently. From what this person told me after that, Marcus basically lost, like, all of his influence around the school because nobody could take him seriously. Like, the former king of the emo boys who was the edgelord around school and had the final say in everything that little click did, basically lost all of his power because he tried to rob the one person in the school who just, you know, Keanu Reeved him. 